How to graft plants. Grafting is a technique of combining two plants or pieces of plants so they grow together. This allows you to combine the qualities of a strong, disease-resistant plant with the qualities of another plant, usually one that produces good fruit or attractive flowers. While there are many methods of grafting, the methods described here should allow you to graft almost any vegetable or fruit seedling, flowering bush, and even certain trees such as citrus trees. For information on grafting larger branches or different types of trees, see the article Graft a Tree, Steps. Understand the purpose of grafting. Fruit plants, including tomatoes and others sometimes thought of as vegetables, are bred and cross-bred over many generations to improve their attributes. However, no one variety is perfect. By removing a section of a plant that produces great fruit and grafting it onto a variety that absorbs nutrients well and resists disease, you can create a plant with the benefits of each. Because you're trying to combine specific attributes, there's no advantage to grafting two plants of the same variety together. The resulting plant will not produce offspring with the same mix of qualities. The seeds are produced by the top, grafted portion only. Purchase high-quality rootstock seeds or plants. The rootstock plant is the plant that provides a root system and base. Because these are carefully bred for certain qualities, they are typically more expensive than standard seeds, sometimes around 50 for a single seed. Pick a rootstock that has the qualities you're looking for. Generative rootstock puts more energy into producing fruit, but is more vulnerable to disease, cold, and heat. Consider using these in mild climates such as the Pacific Northwest, and harvest small fruit as soon as it ripens. Vegetative rootstock tends to be less fragile and handles heat better, but won't produce fruit quickly. It is ideal for long, hot growing seasons. Pick a rootstock specifically resistant to diseases in your area if you have problems with disease-ridden plants. Generative rootstock puts more energy into producing fruit, but is more vulnerable to disease, cold, and heat. Consider using these in mild climates such as the Pacific Northwest, and harvest small fruit as soon as it ripens. Vegetative rootstock tends to be less fragile and handles heat better, but won't produce fruit quickly. It is ideal for long, hot growing seasons. Pick a rootstock specifically resistant to diseases in your area if you have problems with disease-ridden plants. Select a compatible variety of the same species for the fruit-producing plant. The fruit-producing, or cyan, plant produces the better fruit, and its top will be grafted onto the rootstock. Research your rootstock to find out which varieties will thrive when grafted onto it. If you are running a farm or commercial operation, you should research which cyan plant will produce the type of fruit you're looking for. Note, most plants cannot be grafted onto a plant of a different species for instance, a cucumber cannot grow on a tomato plant. Some plants can be grafted onto related species in the same genus or family, but you should ask an expert or search online to determine whether that applies to your plants before attempting. Note, most plants cannot be grafted onto a plant of a different species for instance, a cucumber cannot grow on a tomato plant. Some plants can be grafted onto related species in the same genus or family, but you should ask an expert or search online to determine whether that applies to your plants before attempting. Use two plants of the same size. Grafting is most successful when the rootstock base variety and the cyan top variety have the same size stem. Plant your rootstock seeds and cyan seeds in separate, labeled containers. If you know that one variety grows faster than the other plant at different times so they'll reach the best grafting stage at the same time. The grafting stage for each type of graft is described in the methods below. Plant several seeds at least of each variety, since there's always a chance some won't grow or survive the grafting process. If you're growing large numbers of plants, you can use an online seed calculator to determine how many you'll need to plant. Graft during early morning or just after sunset. At these times, the plant will be moving water from its roots to its leaves transpiring at a slower rate, which makes it less vulnerable to stress from grafting and the accompanying water loss. Ideally, you should carry out the grafting indoors and in a shaded location. If you can only graft the plants at another time, move them to a shady spot in the early morning of the day you plan to graft. If you can only graft the plants at another time, move them to a shady spot in the early morning of the day you plan to graft. Sanitize your tools to reduce the risk of infection. Since you'll be making an open cut into the plant, you should keep your hands and tools as clean as possible to reduce the chance of an infection entering the plant. Sanitize your cutting tool before you begin. Scrub your hands with antimicrobial soap and put on latex gloves, greater than. Treat newly grafted plants with special care. Plants that have just been grafted are more vulnerable to temperature changes and infection until the two plants have sealed together. For some types of grafting, you'll need to have a healing chamber, ready where you can control the environment carefully. 
Chamber construction is described in more detail in the top graft section. The other methods listed here do not require one.